After all of the years of warnings, we are now at a place in North America where people are going to be clamoring to get into FEMA camps. There are going to be notices that show up and say, Congratulations, FEMA camp resident number 32717359. Your place has now been reserved. Please report to fill in the address. And off you will go, and people will be celebrating it. You don't think so? Stick around for today's video, because I have some information, something I'm going to share, that's going to simultaneously blow your mind, send shivers down your spine, and boil your blood. It is that bad. For many years, people have warned about what's coming with FEMA, how they're going to come with all sorts of wonderful flowery language about how they're going to make your life better. But once you disappear into one of these camps, you're never going to be heard from again. And I chose this particular picture very carefully because what it shows, if you look really close, way off in the distance, way off in the distance, you'll see one of America's great cities, our wonderful cities. Remember that term. And way out here, way far away from the city, you see this big field of trailers. It's going to be a giant, open-air, pay attention here, ladies, co-ed prison where the rule of the jungle is going to apply. And I want you to think long and hard about what that might mean, especially when they, of course, disarm everybody before they go into the camp. And they have a giant fence around it. And it's nothing but 75% men, 25% women. It's going to be a re-education camp for a lot of people. Even though they're not going to say it, you're going to get a new education very quickly. Just like a lot of people who get locked up do. They learn things very quick. But before I forget, 2 minutes and 15 seconds and I want to say thank you to everyone who continues to show up here every day participates in the channel, participates in the discussion. We have a lot to talk about for sure, but for those of you who have stepped up and gone over to the Patreon channel, thank you also so much. You are making a huge, huge difference in my life. I know there's a lot of channels out there where all of a sudden through they'll start hawking some product that you don't need, or perhaps they will have different things pop up and get in the way of the screen. All I do here is for about a minute is talk about my Patreon channel, what we offer over there versus here, what you get for your $1 a month, gloves off analysis of things. We do videos about every week over there and how it makes a difference combating the censorship from YouTube. The reason you see those other channels taking part in what they call brand connect is because of what they're not telling you about this platform and what's happened to the advertising rates. And those of us who've done this for a living for a long time and the giant haircut we've taken. Now, if you don't believe me about this, if you don't believe me, this is what was said by what very well might be the very next president of the United States. This should terrify you. Once great cities have become unlivable, unsanitary nightmares surrendered to the homeless, the drug addicted, and the violent and dangerously deranged. We're making many suffer for the whims of a deeply unwell few, and they are unwell indeed. The homeless have no right to turn every park and sidewalk into a place for them to squat and do drugs. Americans should not have to step over piles of needles and waste as they walk down a street, a beautiful city, or at least once beautiful city, because they've changed so much over the last 10 years. Our first consideration should be the rights and safety of the hardworking, law-abiding citizens who make our society function. When I'm back in the White House, we will use every tool, lever, and authority to get the homeless off our streets. We want to take care of them, but they have to be off our streets. There is nothing compassionate about letting these individuals live in filth and squalor rather than getting them the help that they need. We need professionals to help them. For a small fraction of what we spend upon 
Ukraine, we could take care of every homeless veteran in America. Our veterans are being treated horribly. Likewise, with all of the money we will save by ending mass unskilled migration, we will have a huge dividend to address this crisis in our own country. Under my strategy, working with states, we will ban urban camping wherever possible. Violators of these bans will be arrested, but they will be given the option to accept treatment and services if they're willing to be rehabilitated. Many of them don't want that, but we'll give them the option. We will then open up large parcels of inexpensive land, bring in doctors, psychiatrists, social workers, and drug rehab specialists, and create 10 cities where the homeless can be relocated and their problems identified. But we'll open up our cities again, make them livable, and make them beautiful. For those who are just temporarily down on their luck, we will work to help them quickly reintegrate into a normal life. For those who have addictions, substance abuse, and common mental health problems, we will get them into treatment. And for those who are severely mentally ill and deeply disturbed, we will bring them back to mental institutions where they belong with the goal of reintegrating them back into society once they are well enough to manage. It's a tough task, a very tough task. What's taken place on the streets, what's taken place with their taking so much drugs. But the fact is we're going to try. This strategy will be far better and also far less expensive than spending vast sums of taxpayer money to house the homeless in luxury hotels without addressing their underlying issues. And they have so many of these underlying issues and needs. This is how I will end the scourge of homelessness and make our cities clean and safe and beautiful once again. We will do it. We will bring back America. Thank you. Now, did you pay attention to the details there? Large stretches of inexpensive farmland. Well, they'll set up tent cities. Really? For those that are just down on their luck. So they can get back to a, a normal life. Hmm. Large stretches of inexpensive farmland setting up tent cities until you can uh, be re-educated and put back on your feet. I wonder who they're going to start labeling mentally ill enough to be removed from the polite society of... Now, pay attention here. He never once mentioned the suburbs, did he? No, he mentioned the cities. Now, guys, what cities have the biggest problems with this issue with homelessness and drugs? Well, of course, Seattle, Portland, Minneapolis, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, all the northern liberal-run cities. Why would Donald Trump care? Those are Democrat-run cities. Why would a so-called um, enemy of Democrats, why would he care about the plight of the Democrat supporter? Does he think they're going to vote for him? Does he think they're going to vote for him? Or is he, in his heart of hearts, somebody that perhaps we don't know as well as we think? Now, think back to all of the premises of all of these these apocalypse shows. Let's start with The Walking Dead. Yeah, it was rough out on the road after the zombie apocalypse, but what was worse? What was worse? What would happen? What happened when they, they made it to uh, Terminus? Those of you who are Walking Dead fans, please let everybody know down in the comments section. Terminus was a place that seemed like it was a great uh, refuge, but what was there? Yeah, a bunch of cannibals, that's right. And then they, of course, found Woodbury and the governor. But then what were they doing there? Every single place they went, as bad as it was on the road, they thought, oh, this, this new place is going to be better. They found a reason to get back on the road again and be free. And then don't get me started on the serious colony that we have talked about ad nauseum at this point. You see these walls? Notice how the walls are on the outside of the city. How the, the cities need to be one thing, but the suburbs need to be something else. How there's a, a green zone, an occupied green zone, where all of the uh, 
People who are operating appropriately according to the government, oh, they get to live and they get to have everything they need while everybody down here in the wards has to scratch and scrape, but they're all still behind walls. Nobody's free. I don't care whether you look at revolution, defiance, the walking dead colony. Black sales is a little bit of a different thing because that has more to do with the new world and there's just not being a level of control yet. But I do want to specifically talk to the ladies in my audience right now. Because a lot of ladies out there, especially survivalist, prepper, conservative types, have lauded this idea of being um, out on your own, um, being in places like FEMA camps. Let me tell you something. It ain't going to be what you think. They made it look like in Colony, which really very strange, by the way, Season 3, Episode 1, Season 3, Episode 1, of Colony is named Maki, right after the channel, M-A-Q-U-I-S. Now, I don't know if the creators of that knew about my channel, but I know that they knew who the Maki were historically, so they probably named that episode what it was based off the same reason that I named the channel, the Florida Maki. So you can live out in the middle of nowhere all you want, but boy, I tell you what, when certain things that only women need start to run out, things get a little less romantic. And you get locked up in a giant open-air co-ed prison. You get locked up in a giant open-air co-ed prison with only the government to lean on for security. I want folks to think about this. And maybe I should aim this at men who have daughters or loved ones. Maybe you have an ex that you know, you're not really you know, super friends with, but you don't want to see bad happen to. An aunt, a sister, a niece. It's not going to be quite as easy as it was made out to be in um, Jericho. Remember when all the nuclear weapons went off and everybody was kind of left to their own devices and everybody just kind of pulled together? And all the guys were super good, decent guys, and, you know, everybody just kind of got along. Ain't going to be like that. Not in the least. I want you to go back, and I want you to listen to Donald Trump from one day ago, Agenda 47, ending the nightmare of homeless drug addicts and dangerously deranged. I wonder who the government is going to label dangerously deranged next, AR-15. <clears throat> I wonder who. Who might be those who are dangerously direct gun owners? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? And then, of course, based on that, scooping you up. Scooping you up and taking you someplace that is something a little bit worse than hell, especially if you're carrying around two X chromosomes. See, it's all sanitized from the air. That's always the key. See, from up above, flying over places like this, oh, it's all very very sanitary. But what goes on when the sun goes down? In all of these kind of hidden alleys through here? Believe me, people are going to start to uh, cordon off into groups. And it's going to be Mad Max. You mark my words. While everything's going to be restored in the Democrat-run cities. What Donald Trump was saying was that he wants to find some way to make city life better again. Really? Did he once say, did Donald Trump once say, we need to remove all of the people in positions of power who created this nightmare in those cities, and we need to replace them with conservatives and conservative thought so that we can fix the homeless problem the right way, so we can get people back in their homes and back working again. No. Did he say anything like that? No. He, he's talking about the scourge. He's talking about getting just scooping people up and getting the hell rid of them. He's not talking about getting rid of any Democrats in office in those cities. If you're a pro, if, if whatever, you know, whoever you want to vote for, that's fine. But this is how we're going to deal with this. He doesn't mention one time in this entire three minutes and 30 seconds 
about getting rid of the real reason those cities are like they are and addressing the issue. Did anybody notice this? All he wants to do is, he has this meme out where it's like, well, they're not after me. They're really after you. No, he's after you. He is after you. Because if you're down on your luck or if you've made a mistake or something's happened and you just need some time to, to regroup, or if there's a problem, you're going to get scooped up and you're going to be sent out behind giant razor wall fences until you can get your life straight or get the help you need. And they're going to send government help, boy. Isn't that another neat thing that Donald Trump said there? They're going to send all sorts of government helpers out there to help you get back right on the right track again so that you can reintegrate into polite society again. You listen to this, it should scare the living shit out of you. And if it doesn't, you've got a problem. You have a mammon ball worshiping problem. But I will leave that there. And I will pray for everyone, and I would encourage you, everyone, to pray for everyone else, too, that their eyes be open to this. Join us over at Patreon, where we're attempting to do this as well. It's only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. Partnering with Vimeo, gloves off. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.